Assalamu alaikum everyone, didn't see you there. Have you ever wondered why we put salts on icy streets? Well, to find out we need to talk about colligative properties. And if you want to know about it, then this is the video for you to watch. So before we start, remember to like this video and subscribe and comment down below at the end of this video and without any further ado let's begin a solution behavior is different from the pure solvent because the solvent is interfering the solvent particles are interfering with the normal behaviors of the solvent uh, these phenomena are such as phase changes, the solute inter interferes with these stuff. And for that, and to understand that, we need to go to colligative, colligative properties. Now, colligative properties depends more on the concentration of this solute than the chemical identity of it. Now, adding solute to the sol uh, solution changes three things that gives three phenomena. Vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, and freezing point depression. Now, for all of this, instead of using molarity, we use molality. Molality. Now to know about mo. Now let's get onto the phone to get the actual definition of the molality. Now mo molality is moles of sol solute and by kilograms of solvent. Moles per liter. So this is what we use instead of molarity for this case. Like I said a few seconds ago. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to do something different for this for this definition. And let's go back into the board. Well, as you saw on the phone, molality is molality is the moles of the sol moles of the sol moles of the solute to the kilograms of the solvent. It's basically moles per kilogram instead of moles per liter, which is in the molarity. So something like that goes like the following example now as you can see in this example we have iodine plus dichloromethane now if we say we have 10 grams of iodine and 30 grams of dichloromethane this is as follows now when if you're familiar with mole calculations and everything stoichiometry in fact then you can then you already know how it works but if you don't know how it works or are confused uh, you could really help with the mole mole and stoichiometry video and my previous video which was about molarity and dilution although we will we will work more on those for this part of the video. The next parts will be a few, a few knowledge about solutions rather than moles and molarity. So, just so that I can review for you, we multiply it by one mole over 253.8 grams because that's the mole. And we get 0.0... .0 394 moles 
Now if we went to go to the kilograms, 30 grams of dichloromethane times 1 kilograms over 100 grams would mean that there are 0 0.0300 kilograms. Now if we divide that all up, we get 1.31 molal. So this is a 1.31 molal solution. And we write mol molality as in lowercase rather than the uppercase of molarity. And we also give the a italics, meaning the itali italic font. Now let's go to the first cause, that is the lower vapor pressure. Now in a pure solvent like this, you can easily go to the gas it will spontaneously go to the gas phase with no interruptions whatsoever and the number of the particles in the gas phase is the vapor pressure determines the vapor pressure but here when there's a sol solute on the way you'd actually not get a very much vapor pressure because the particle is going to block the way of the solvent and therefore there will be much lower pressure meaning the more solvent we add, solute we add the less the vapor pressure will be and to know the gas pressure we we'll would go through the pressure of the pure solvent times the moles of the solvent to get the new vapor pressure of the solvent. Similarly, the gas phi. Now, if we go through our ideal gas laws, the higher the heat, the faster particles move. So if we apply that here, the, sol the solute won't be able to block many particles. So there, there will be a high, the boiling point will be elevated to, for the liquid or the solvent to boil. This is called boiling point elevation. And to know the new boiling point or the change in bo boiling point, it will be equal to molal times the, a constant regarding the boiling point. And there is the, the freezing depressed point where, let me show this image. Here, as you can see, when the particles are going to form the lattice, it's, the solute is blocking the way from making it into a, sol a lattice. So we have, to, we have to go to an even colder and, and to make it freeze even more to get a solid lattice since it will take more time and the change in temperature oh, that is required for the freezing point looks very similar now for this kb and kf to see the definitions let's go back on the phone because google can explain it better than me so let's go to google and check for the for these constants we're in the mo so we're in the mobile here and now the definition of the kb and kf like i said will be in your textbook but no, or will be explained in your class if if you're in there and you're learning it but just in case i've uh, i have it covered for you you don't have to google it on your own so google says kb in the proportionate constant kb is 
called molo molal boiling point elevation constant it's a constant that is equal to the change in boiling point for one molal solution of a non-volatile molecular solute for water the the value of kb is 0.5120 c over m so this is basically the constant for kb now let's go and search for the freezing The proportionately constant KF is called molal freezing point depression constant. Okay, we know that. It's a constant that is equal to the change of the freezing point. Basically the same thing. Now this value is negative 1.8 oh, negative 1.86 OC per M per molal. So yeah, that's the definitions for both of this. Sorry if Google hasn't explained much. Like, I know it hasn't explained much. I was even confused. Uh, but this video, I couldn't cover the whole thing since we're just learning it and it is introductory material. We only do the basics of it. Um, so I'm not going to dive in deep into that in this video. Uh, so yeah, let's go back to the board for more of this. Now if you want, now as you saw what the constants mean, you have to remember to get the actual temperature of the boiling point. You can, you can give the normal boiling point minus the change in time of the boiling point. Same goes for freezing and yeah. Now come to conclusion of this video, which I gave in the intro. Why do people give salt on icy streets? The question of today's video. Now the answer to that is very clear if you paid attention to the whole video and that is because of the last thing we just talked about freezing point depression because if we add the solute to the solvent the icy part is the solvent and if we add the salt it will take much colder to give the to make it completely icy and we do that so that cars don't become ice skates <laughs> yeah I mean it will be harder to break if there's a lot of ice in the ground and so that's all there's to it if you want more of this remember to subscribe like and comment down below and tell me or any feedback on uh, how am i doing or is my presentation explaining many things and basically and so thank you for watching and i will see you next time